When this woman posted a photo from her relaxing vacation, she couldn't have predicted the internet would have reacted the way it did. There were photos taken at different times by her cousin and a friend of hers. She didn't notice anything unusual at first glance, yet she finally saw it when she took a closer look. There was something she could never forget in the backdrop of one of the photos. Her heart was racing and her blood was running cold, but now it was a viral sensation. She didn't fully understand what had happened and how. Dundas Peak is one of Canada's most popular hiking areas. It has an unbelievably picturesque perspective that overlooks Hamilton, Ontario. Two's Falls, the largest drop in Hamilton, is actually situated in this beautiful mountain home as well. It became a popular platform for people to target because of the frightening design and elegance of the ground. But in that gorgeous wilderness, something had been hidden, and now there was evidence thanks to her. No one would believe what was found here. There has been a substantial rise in the number of missing people since the peak became a destination for hikers, according to local authorities. Few have never again been found after going missing. From 2016, more than 140,000 tourists took a trip to Dundas Peak, given these warnings and the potential dangers of the mountain. One of these travelers didn't know something that he or she would create a very unique chapter in the history of Dundas Mountain. And the story is mind-boggling. The picture taken by the man appeared in a pose common among the photographers on the brink of the peak. His photographs seemed to be no different from anybody else's. There was nothing to see here, or was there? Perched on the edge of the outside of the shelf, he wore a black jacket and jeans and a leg sticking over the abyss's edge. No one had noticed what lurked behind in the background yet. His cousin Kim saw his pictures and some days later she and her friend planned to go to the peak themselves. She decided to pay a babysitter for her child and headed to the summit to reconstruct the portrait of her cousin. The women walked the 2.4-mile circular path to the spot they wanted. They turned to pose and recreate the shot, not realizing that something suspicious was to be found in those very photos just a tad bit later. They stood at the edge of the cliff to replicate the image, risking death. That is when they saw something gleaming beneath. They noticed, though, that they were not taking a glance at the water below. It was something that was a lot closer. Somebody placed a set of keys about three feet away dangling from the root down below. Kim sat closer so carefully, leaning as far as she dared on the edge. The person who had lost the keys clearly wanted them back badly. She was sitting on her belly when she finally got a hold of them. She understood very little of what she did right there would prove to be very significant. When she had the keys in her hand, she looked at them and found that a key for a Hyundai Elantra was among them. It started getting late and the pair thought it would be better to get back to their cars and finish their hike. Before the park was closed, they had to come back. That was the policy. The two knew all about the news of the people who disappeared and didn't want to remain on the mountain during the evening. They hurried back along the road, all the while terrified that no one else would appear anywhere. Then something unexpected happened that sent chills down their spines. The two women got increasingly uncomfortable when they walked towards the parking lot. It was exceptionally quiet and empty as they came to it. Only two vehicles, theirs and one other, were left on the property. As they searched closer, they found the Hyundai Elantra was the other vehicle. It was rusty and dirty, indicating it had been there for a while. It was getting way too dark now and the duo didn't want to hang around. The girls decided to put the keys on the car's roof while discussing their plan of action in an attempt that the driver would locate them easily. But the same car was shown on TV one week later. A female visitor was supposedly missing as per the sources. Police already found her car in the car park but they didn't know where she was. The announcement surprised the duo naturally. Time went on and the duo all but forgot about the photograph that they took on the cliff until someone made a remark on Reddit which would set the story in motion again. Kim couldn't believe her eyes. She couldn't believe the person was actually right. The pictures of her in the photo that her cousin took were there uploaded on the internet. They were being shared side by side with thousands of individuals reading, watching, and exchanging the photos. A single analyst discovered it. In the context of her cousin's picture, there was a tiny but important item in the background. When she saw it, she spoke to the other Reddit members directly in the expectation that they'd help her get the answers she was looking for. Kim's friend said, So a little backstory. Around a month ago, my friend and I went hiking at Dundas Peak in Hamilton, Ontario. She suggested this location because her cousin went there a few days before us and posted an Instagram of him sitting on the edge of a cliff, looking over Hamilton in the Niagara Escarpment. When we got there, we took turns recreating the photo. She went on by saying, Today she messaged me when she noticed something obscurely in the background in her cousin's photograph. Way below the edge of the trail where the slope is too steep to stand on, there appears to be a thin person standing unnaturally straight with no visible face. It wasn't unusual for someone else to be in the picture, but something she was ready to finally discover would alter their lives forever. Kim's friend said, I know you're probably thinking it's possibly just a brave hiker, but trust me, that spot is completely inaccessible. Maybe it isn't a person, but I'm not sure what else it can be. I was hoping those would have been to Dundas Peak and have taken similar pictures could share it. Hopefully we can figure out what we're looking at. 
The report for the missing person described the woman as large, describing her wearing clothing and said she was last seen wearing jeans and a light gray sweater. The most interesting aspect is that no other pictures taken at Dundas Peak feature the person that appeared in this. Why did the incredible personage not show in the 10,000 other pictures taken in that place if it was just a play of shadows or some kind of trick of the light? The comments flowed effortlessly in. There were many people who immediately indicated that many people had vanished in Dundas Peak and around it. They claimed the incredible figure was an unhappy hiker who encountered a horrible end in the hills. Although the picture was disturbing to the minority, many others claimed that a fair clarification should be given. But what might even be the logical explanation here? The form was speculated on by a user that the shadow played a trick on the eye while falling on the rock face and thus causing the illusion. One stated that it was a time to blame the melting ice poles for it. That one was obviously just making fun of everyone who thought it was a paranormal occurrence. Then finally, somebody provided the most probable answer. Sorry to burst all your bumbles, but there's a trail that leads up to that area and goes around the escarpment just under the rocks. That is most likely a person hiking around. In reality, a Reddit user called DarkItact42 reported that he had created the uncertainty himself one time. The user claimed they climbed on Dundas Peak many times, nevertheless on the very day the eerie photo was taken, he was also hiking around there, and that wasn't everything he said. He also remembered that he had dark jeans and a white jacket on, which looked like the mystery person in the photo. Could it be that he was the person everyone was looking at? None of these claims impressed all of us, of course, and since the article had been circulated countless times, international press organizations soon took up the story. Only after the story appeared on the website of Mail Online did anyone provide a different theory. The analyst noted that one Christmas Eve under Dundas Peak there was a devastating train crash. In 1934, a total of 15 lives were lost. Several feel that their souls are still roaming the cliff to this day. While local people have taken the news with just a little grain of salt, the image is still circulating and entertaining people around the world. Even though sliced up beef goes back up the hill pretty often, she can never overlook her friend's cousin's strange picture. And that teaches us that something unexpected can happen even in the most common moments. And she's not the only one who caught something unexplainable on her camera. Casey Lynn Hathaway from North Carolina was playing in his backyard one afternoon when he suddenly disappeared from his parents' sight. They were worrying and getting hysterical as moments passed. They never thought that leaving their kid playing by himself for a while would lead to the longest 48 hours they'd ever have in their whole lives. Mastering time alone in independent play is an important development in a kid's life. As these little ones are learning to do some things by themselves, parents can get a little time to relax as well. That's why Casey's mom allowed her son to play in the backyard of their home while she was inside preparing their meal. After all, he was accompanied by her older relatives. However, when the other kids went inside, the three-year-old boy named Casey was nowhere in sight. After 45 minutes of frantic searching, they finally realized they need all the help they can get. Casey got lost in the woods and the search and rescue operation took 48 hours. Thankfully, Casey was miraculously found safe with minor bruises only. However, when the kid regained his strength, he kept on talking about something that saved him in the forest. Casey Lynn Hathaway is a three-year-old boy from Craven County, North Carolina. At his age, his family describes him as a smart boy who always has a lot of questions. He's an adorable kid that's loved by all. Aside from eating his favorite chicken nuggets, Casey also loves to watch children's movies and cartoons on Netflix. Aside from indoor activities, he's also hungry for outdoor play and is very active, especially when other kids visit him in the house. His mom allows him to play in the backyard for a few hours every day, even without adult company. However, the unfortunate event that happened on a Tuesday afternoon would surely make his parents rethink letting him play outside without close supervision. Craven County is a simple and quiet neighborhood in North Carolina. Unlike most places in the USA that have changed a lot due to modernization, the locals who live in this community tend to be conservative. The rural feel and the peacefulness in the place are some of the reasons why Brittany and Chris Hathaway are thankful they got to live in Craven County. They're parents of Casey and they consider it a privilege to live with their parents and grandparents in the simple community. The neighborhood is quite small, everyone knows one another and even the crime rate is low. Never did they imagine that one day, both of them will wonder whether it's still safe or not to let her son alone outside. Brittany loves her peaceful life in the humble home near the woods. She and her relatives close to her and they usually visit each other and eat together. That morning, her son's cousin went to their house and she led them to the backyard so they could play. She was busy cleaning the house, chatting with her grandmother and cooking something for lunch. Casey was playing outside with two children who were slightly older than him. It was already a routine and she didn't feel any kind of trouble. She was happy that her kid got company. However, when the two kids entered the house, she sensed that something was wrong. Brittany went down to the backyard to look for Casey, however, he was out of sight. She kept on calling his name while circling the house. She went inside, checked the rooms, and even went to the front porch as well. Still, there was no sign of the little boy. Chris, along with the other people in the house, started to feel the panic in her voice. Casey's just three years old and he doesn't have a habit of going to the neighbor's house without telling his mom. 
The elders got up and went to nearby houses to search for him. When minutes passed and they couldn't locate him, Brittany painfully realized where her son might be. North Carolina is known for its agriculture and forestry industry. Craven County is a rural community where most residents rely on farming for a living. Just like many others, Brittany's family home is located near Woodland. When Casey was nowhere to be found in the house and in the neighborhood, they suspected the child had trailed off to the nearby forest. At once, Brittany, Chris, and their other relatives sprang to the woods to look for Casey. They kept on shouting at the top of their voice, hoping the little kid was just hiding or stuck somewhere. With each passing minute, Brittany's heart is being surrounded by fear. The young couple can't afford to think that something bad had happened to him. 45 minutes had passed and still no one in the family was able to locate the little boy. Casey's great-grandmother knew that with each passing minute, the life of the kid is being driven closer to danger. She was left in the house while the others decided to search the woodlands. However, she knew that the situation was getting out of control. With trembling hands, the old lady dialed 911. She told the agent that the little boy was walking in the woods back there, and when the other kids returned home, Casey was left alone. After the call, a search and rescue was planned right away. In a small county where there's not too much trouble, the news of a missing boy in the woods instantly made headlines. Aside from the rescuers sent by 911, volunteers from the FBI, NCIS, US Marine Corps, and more came to the family's residence to help locate the little boy. Brittany told the authorities that Casey's 2 feet 4 inches tall and that he weighs 25 pounds. She also showed them a picture of the adorable boy and pleaded to please find him. Her heart was racing all the time her son was out there in a treacherous terrain. Even the condition of the weather outside was alarming. More than 100 rescuers went into the rugged terrain to look for Casey. The heavily wooded areas measure almost a thousand acres and they needed to find the little boy as fast as possible. Aside from the wild animals that might harm the boy, the temperature had dropped to 20 degrees and they feared that Casey wouldn't be able to stand the extreme cold. However, after a day of continuous search and rescue operation, the volunteers returned weary and unsuccessful. They were wondering how a three-year-old boy had walked all those miles and where did he possibly went? Because of the sad news on the first 24 hours, more volunteers came to look for him. Aside from the professional rescuers from different government organizations, the locals volunteered to join the rescue operation. However, as the weather continued to go bad, the authorities were forced to send volunteers home. Only the trained searchers were left to continue the operation. All throughout, Brittany couldn't sleep or eat. Her son was only wearing a coat and sweatpants when he vanished. Chris, on the other hand, didn't stop to rest. He was determined to search the woods as long as he can. He had big hopes in his heart that his son was just somewhere out there safe and sound. When 24 hours had passed and the rescuers weren't able to find Casey, his family began to fear the worst. The extremely cold temperatures can be fatal, especially to a little boy. Also, Brittany knew that Casey isn't able to look for his own food. Craven County Emergency Management Director Stanley Kite had treated Casey's disappearance as a missing child case. However, he also asked the community to report anything remotely suspicious. Moreover, the authorities have used drones and canine units and even employed helicopters. Everyone in the rescue team knew that time was crucial. They needed to find Casey as soon as possible. Casey disappeared on a Tuesday morning. After a day of the never-ceasing search operation, hundreds came to help the little boy. The number of professional rescuers and volunteers totaled more than 600. The boy's parents were quite relieved to see how many people were willing to help them locate their son. However, all that matters to them is for their son to be found alive. On Thursday morning, hope rose when the authorities received a tip from someone who heard a boy crying for his mother deep in the woods around 9.30 p.m. Needless to say, the team went into the area with renewed effort and energy. They couldn't afford to risk another day. Chuck Owinity EMS Captain Shane Greer was one of the professional rescuers who hoped and prayed for Casey's safety. As a father, he knew that what was happening is one of a parent's worst nightmares. Although exhausted, he kept going back into the woods. He was struggling on rough terrain when he saw him. The poor boy was stuck in the briars looking cold and helpless. When he was finally near, he almost cried. Casey is alive. Quickly, he distangled him from the bush and brought him out of the woods. Brittany and Chris cried for joy when they saw Casey in the arms of Captain Shane Greer. He was soaking wet, conscious and crying for his mom. They saw the little boy was dirty and his body showed evidence of frostbite. He was still wearing the same coat. Right away, Casey was put in the ambulance parked at bay. All of his family went straight to the hospital. Brittany knew that his son was starving and bruises needed immediate attention. However, she felt in her heart that the hardest part was over. At the hospital, the doctors attended to Casey's needs right away. However, they were relieved to see the boy was in good health. Nonetheless, they did the necessary evaluation and examination to see for any further injuries. Casey was evidently exhausted. He dozed off and his parents allowed him to rest. He was put on IV and was advised to rest for a few days, but when he woke up to everyone's amazement, he started to talk about what happened to him while he was out there in the woods. 
Brittany, Chris, and the other members of the family were all waiting for Casey to wake up. Although the doctors advised the parents to let the boy rest, Brittany was curious to know what really happened. She was afraid her son was traumatized. But when the little boy opened up his eyes, he smiled as if nothing had happened. He was even surprised to see all his relatives were looking at him. Before anyone could ask, Casey told everyone in an excited voice that he wasn't alone out there. There's a friend who saved him, but who is this friend? Although relieved, Brittany and Chris couldn't help but wonder how their three-year-old son had survived the freezing cold with no food and water. Of course, there were different speculations in their mind, but when Casey told them that a friend was accompanying him all throughout, they were keen to find out who it was. Clearly regaining his energy back, Casey told his parents that he was with a bear. Brittany and Chris asked him over and over again, still Casey's answers were the same. There was a bear in the woods and they were together for two days. This right here is just a way too terrible thing to see on your camera. Still, Casey's answers were the same. There was a bear in the woods and they were together for two days. This right here is just a way too terrible thing to see on your camera. The last thing a guy wanted to do was take this image of a kind of winged beast pursuing a sad little deer in frame in his garden. He set up the camera in hopes of catching the culprit that was leaving dismembered corpses in his backyard. Well, he caught more than what he bargained for. You probably think of being squeaked by massive waves or perhaps crushed on wood or worse yet sunk as you talk about the hazards of surfing. But you might just figure out that there are many other risks far closer than you might expect once you look at this picture. If it was up to us, we'd either out of that water in record speed or we'd be too terrified to move a single muscle. Dancing is an excellent way of burning calories and staying healthy with a lot of fun. To fly in the skies and come down to earth all while dancing, that's something quite special and magical. Some might even consider it a bit too much and a bit too drastic, but hey, to each his own, we suppose. People who are used to hiking and climbing mountains are aware that the paths they take might be a bit tight and dangerous, so they take their precautions and bring the necessary equipment to stay safe. But even those familiar with such rough roads may think long and hard about walking along this extremely narrow route in China. And you, would you do it? Did you ever see people getting very tense on the staircase and thinking, what is the point of that? Well, to the guy that may have lost his foot if he didn't react. Don't forget to bring your steel boots every time you visit the store from now on. Hopefully, the balance of this handyman is as good as his technical skills. He used the ladder perfectly in order to come up with such an idea, but at the same time, we really can't claim it was a good one. Though his business acumen will also drive him up the company ladder, maybe. This is a serious commitment to change a simple light bulb. Although most individuals don't have a problem sitting on a large building, this picture looks like something straight out of a Hitchcock movie. There are numerous photos out there of people sitting on the edge of a building and taking in the life that's happening right below their feet, but this guy right here took it to a new level. Only individuals without acrophobia will think long and hard about what this man does. He's either a bold man or just an idiot, no in between. Most of us refuse to dust at home, but we're more than happy that we don't have to do the job of this guy. He's definitely far up over the ground, but evidently there's a breach of health and safety because he has no harness attached. At the same time, we're pretty sure that this photo was taken in a country that's probably not regulating the safety standards as much as others. Regardless of anything, I'm gonna stick to my home dusting, thank you very much. It may look like a horror film, but certain people are terrified of something coming out of their toilets. Okay, it may sound ridiculous, but perhaps it's not usually as distasteful as we imagine, but this image demonstrates quite the opposite. After this, you'll certainly need a new bathroom. It's best to forget about this one. It's that guy's home now. Imagine if you heard a noise outside in your home alone late at night. You go hunting and tracking down the noise and you stumble upon this scenery, a bunch of sheep looking at you from outside your house. This may just be the brightness of the spotlight that lets their eyes shine, but it seems like these sheep have more than a midnight snack on their mind. Geese are very scary creatures, that much is clear. Their depictions usually revolve around being heavier, stronger, and more violent ducks, and they want to scream and attack anybody who dares meet their eyes. You ever stared at their faces, though? Well, don't do that. Lettuce for a salad, right? Lettuce is a dark leafy vegetable used in salads and sandwiches. Fit for vegans, vegetarians, and all others, right? Okay, well, that obviously wasn't the case with this particular package. When the shopper took a bag of salad, they certainly didn't expect it to start moving around. We certainly hope that this poor little thing was released into the wild after this photo was taken. Although no missing person was discovered in this story, listen on about someone who did go missing in the wilderness. The Hathaway family had given their deepest gratitude to all the officers, professional rescuers, and local volunteers who helped in saving Casey. Although she's not fully convinced about her son's story, she decided to tell them what Casey kept on telling them when they woke up. Somehow, she wanted someone to confirm if her son's story was real or he was just imagining things because of the fatigue and trauma. However, even officials couldn't confirm if the companion was real or not. According to Sheriff Hughes, North Carolina is indeed home to black bears. There are many of them in the woods and typically these bears aren't aggressive towards humans. However, he can also say a public statement to confirm if Casey's claim is true. It could be, it could be not. 
He even added that what's more important is the little boy was already recuperating in the hospital safe and sound. Even the other authorities consider Casey's story as cute rather than factual. When the story got out about Casey's version of the story, the attention of the media channels and newspaper outlets were instantly caught. Of course, it's not every day that a little boy's lost in the woods and while he's there, a bear keeps him company. Could the bear possibly have given Casey the food and water he needed to survive? The experts even think the little boy survived the extremely cold temperature because of the bear's natural warm body. However, even the policemen and professional rescuers didn't find any trace that a bear roamed the area. After two days in the hospital, Casey was back to normal. Brittany was happy to see her little kid seemed to forget the dark nights he spent alone in the woods. He even asked for his favorite nuggets and requested if he could finally watch his favorite TV show, Paw Patrol. While the news that Casey had totally recuperated, still, what really happened to him baffled most people. There were even speculations that he didn't spend two days in the woods. Other notions claim that someone might have abducted him and left him in the woods just before rescuers found him. The policeman dealing with Casey's disappearance case held a press conference to clear some things out once and for all. There were speculations that the boy spent two nights sitting in a vehicle or a house and was put there in the woods for a couple of hours before he was rescued. Sheriff Hughes told the media the official report. According to him, Casey's body showed evidence that he spent 48 hours in the woods, with nothing to protect him from the cold but his clothes. His core temperature was very low and there were frostbites in his fingers. They also said the little boy didn't just stay put. He roamed around, always an hour ahead of the rescue team before being caught in the bush. This is yet another shot that seems like it was developed and published by Hitchcock himself. Whoever the photographer was, they may have been at least somewhat tense when they saw this murder of crows. Yes, that's what it's called. We'd also like to know what was going through their head at the time. It's more unusual to see such scenery, especially on a road in town. Brittany decided not to ask her son about the bear again. Although her mind couldn't help but wonder, she realized that he wanted nothing more than his safety. If her kid was indeed with a bear, then she could only whisper a silent prayer of thanks. If not, she also feels grateful that somehow the inspiring thought that he wasn't alone had helped him survive. The 48-hour period that her little boy was missing was the worst days of her life, according to Brittany. Chris feels the same. No matter what happened, they were extremely thankful to have their son back. Casey's aunt Brianna couldn't help but express on social media how relieved and grateful she was her nephew was safe. She snapped a photo of Casey in the hospital and put in the caption that he hung out with a bear. Needless to say, the post gathered different reactions from the audience. Some think the story's too good to be true and there were those who praised Casey for his bravery and will to survive, while others expressed their fear the boy was indeed kidnapped. The post is now private, still only Casey knew what happened. The authorities had officially closed Casey's case. They also sent their gratitude to the local volunteers and other organization that joined the giant search and rescue operation. Everyone was happy with the way things ended. Even the other residents of Craven County felt proud and secure. When there's a problem, they prove the whole community will act as one. Sheriff Hughes believed the kid's survival was a miracle. He considered the story with a barren inspiration that helped Casey survive. According to him, no matter what happened, the three-year-old kid has some story to tell when he grows up. Sheriff Hughes also mentioned he was amazed by the child's bravery. Oftentimes, the stories about a lost kids in the wilderness can only be seen in horror movies, fairy tales, or in a parent's worst nightmare. However, it really does happen in real life. It's sad and heartbreaking enough to know that a kid is missing and everyone rejoices when they manage to survive. However, there are cases when others seem to run out of luck. Aside from Casey, there are other kids who went through the traumatizing experience of being lost all alone without food or water. Fortunately enough, their guardian angels didn't abandon them and led them back to safety. Here are some of them. Yamato Tanooka was only 7 years old when he got lost in the woods in Hokkaido, Japan. It happened in 2016 when the family took their summer vacation. Yamato was extremely hard-headed and kept on throwing rocks at other people. In hopes of teaching him a lesson, his parents decided to abandon him on a road next to the woods. They wanted him to realize his mistake. They drove off for a while and after five minutes went back to see if Yamato had learned his lesson, but to their horror he was nowhere to be seen. Yamato truly believed he was abandoned by his parents, so he decided to go deeper into the woods to search for a new home. Fortunately for him, he found an empty military base with small huts. There was also a used mattress that allowed him to sleep comfortably. However, there was no food and the kid had survived by drinking rainwater. It took six days for the rescuers to find him. Aside from mild hypothermia and extreme hunger, the kid had a speedy recovery. However, the parents decided to seek help from a psychologist to deal with a trauma their carelessness might have brought their kid. In October 1999, three-year-old Jared Tadera was entrusted by his father Alan to his friends who went hiking in Comanche Park at the Roosevelt National Forest in Colorado. Alan was originally included in the plan but back out at the last minute. Jared was keen to go, so in the end his father's friend decided to take him and promised to look after him. However, it seems the group forgot there was a child with them. No one can give a plausible estimate of how long he was gone from sight when the police interviewed them. 
A huge search party with 50 dogs helped to find the missing boy. However, it was only years later when authorities finally found Jared's remains. Up to this day, there's no clear report about what happened. Some say he was snatched by a lion, while others think he was murdered. In September 2016, three-year-old Saren from the small village of Kuts in Siberia wandered after a poppy. Before he realized that he was straying too far, he was already deep down in the woods of Siberia, a forest known for having wild bears and wolves. Moreover, the temperature at night can drop well below freezing. Saren went missing for three days. With all points considered, no one in the village believed that he'd be able to come back alive. However, the family and rescuers never gave up and on the third day, his uncle found him curled up between the roots of a tree. The little boy told everyone he'd eaten his chocolate bar. Everyone was impressed by his bravery and stamina. As a sign of relief, the whole village had a celebration for his safe return. In 2005, 11-year-old Brendan Hawkins joined a Boy Scout Jamboree camping trip. They went to Bear River Boy Scout Reservation near Salt Lake City, Utah. The forest covers 17,000 acres. Since it's an annual camping event, his parents allowed him to go. After all, there were supervisors to accompany the boys and a total of 1,400 students camping in the area. The Boy Scouts were given their respective partner or buddy. Brennan's partner, however, grew impatient at one of the activities and told Brennan to just follow him to the mess hall. Instead of going after his partner, the boy decided to skip dinner and explore the forest. When supervisors took a head count and found the boy was missing, they instantly formed a rescue party. It took four days for them to find Brennan. When asked, the boy said he purposely hid from the rescuers, thinking they were bad people. Moreover, he wasn't aware that he was already missing for four days. In his mind, only